Today on Parker's Reefs, we review my other hobby, competitive pinball playing. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'll make it about reefing. I'll see if I can find something laying around the house. Oh, hey, look what we got here. Some Vitalis coral and fish foods. Maybe we'll make a video on that. Okay, so on today's video that's definitely not about pinball machines, we're going to take a look at the Vitalis SPS Coral Food, their LPS Coral Pellets, their Soft Coral Food, their Anemone Pellets, and finally, the Vitalis Marine Grazer. Alright, so a good place to start would be to have a look at uh, these foods with the lids off. So, the SPS Coral Food, as you can imagine, is quite a fine powder that you mix with some water and uh, you basically broadcast feed in front of a pump so that your SPS can, uh, the polyps can grab that food and consume. The LPS Coral Pellets, on the other hand, they were much larger and are quite solid and they're not made to broadcast feed, they're made to uh, drop into the mouth specifically of LPS Corals. This Soft Coral Food is again a powder that uh, you mix up with some water in your broadcast feed so that uh, your soft coral uh, sweepers come out and chew them up. And finally, well, not finally, second last is our anemone pellets, which much like the LPS pellets, um, are designed to drop into the mouths of the anemone. So they're obviously a, a larger sinking pellet. And finally, our marine grazer is a uh, shape that we're pretty familiar with. It's a uh, little disc that you put um, onto the glass with a suction cup and your fish come and grab it from there. All right, so we'll just fit in one quick, hang on a second, what's in the pinball machine? Looks like I forgot one of the Vitalis foods, the algae flakes. So we'll be sure to add that to the video as well. So I'm sure most of you know what algae flakes look like, but this is the Vitalis algae flakes. They're um, quite large, uh, they're nice and dry, and they're easy to pick up. So let's review those while we're here. All right, so uh, welcome to my uh, fish room. I'm gonna spread some of the uh, testing of these foods out across a few different tanks because um, the last thing I want to do is go and add uh, five different foods to a tank that doesn't normally get it. This is going to make my nitrate and phosphate go through the roof. But if I add the uh, recommended dose, um, one per tank, and just sort of spread the lab around a little bit, we'll be fine. So uh, first off the rank is uh, this SBS coral food. Um, I'm going to put that into my uh, my original frag tank because whilst it's got a bit of a mix of um, corals in there, it is predominantly SBS frags. So um, I followed the steps and got um, a small uh, amount of water. I got about 400 ml of tank water there. And I'm just going to put um, five scoops. Now it sounds like a lot, but they're very small scoops um, because this tank's 250 liters. I'll get the scoop out to show you if I can do it without getting food everywhere. That's the scoop there. So you can see it's pretty small um, and this powder is incredibly fine. So I'm going to get uh, five scoops of this. Two, three, four, five, go. It's going to give me a little bit of a um, slurry of. Uh, there, so let's give it a bit of a mix. Make sure uh, any of those little clumps all get pushed back into the water. This would probably also be a good time. You could add um, some amino acids or something to the water as well, just to um, help spur on that feeding response. Um, in full disclosure, I've already done my amino acids to this tank today, so I'm not going to um, give them a double dose because that'll just um, make the glass really dirty in a day or two. So um, they've already had their aminos. The lights have been on for about an hour in that tank, so things are starting to wake up and uh, they're looking pretty happy. But um, yeah, let's pour it into the flow and see how we go. All right, so I've got my um, slurry of uh, foods here. I'm just gonna pour it into the um, flow. Just gonna mix up a bit more water just to help get it all stirred up. Might even pour some directly over some of the ones up here just because the flow takes its time getting over there. And using the um, tub, I'm going to give it a little bit of an extra stir up as well just to make sure that it gets a real good um, surge flow, I guess. It'll also help stir up a bit of the detritus in the bottom of this tank that I probably should have removed before, but um, so be it. Okay, so I've turned the um, flow off to that tank now just because it's pretty well stirred throughout the tank nice and evenly. You can see that by the um, pretty even sort of cloud throughout the tank. I've just turned the flow off just so I can um, get any sort of visuals of any of the um, SPS uh, looking super uh, hungry or anything like that. And I can see a couple of pieces already. Um, this little frag down here has got polyps fully out and um, a couple down the bottom here are, are giving it a good stretch. Um, 
So I'll get the camera in on this piece. It's kind of hard to see from that angle, but uh, I'll uh, tilt it down a little bit. This piece down here is um, reaching for the sky with these polyps, which is always cool. Um, and yeah, some of the frags down over this way are pretty excited too. So I'll get some footage so we can have a look how they're, uh, how they're responding to the food. So you can see the bird of paradise there stretching for the sky. Some nice uh, pink fireworks next to it. Here's uh, one of my really nice purple tipped uh, green acros enjoying life. Beautiful uh, blue Carolina, I think that one is. I can't remember exactly the species. Even some of the zoas actually are eating the SPS food, which is funny. And uh, this neat little uh, acro frag here, you can, see, you can barely see the skeleton because the polyps have extended that far, which is um, really nice to see. Hopefully that'll spur on a big growth spurt for him because he's been sitting stagnant for a while. And even this piece here, which is a, um, a, a gold lighthouse, Samacora, I think it is, um, really enjoying the, uh, the food. Okay, moving on to the next food, because we've got a lot to cover, is the uh, Vitalis LPS coral pellets. Um, as mentioned before, these are a pellet that, um, they're a little bit larger, um, and they're sinking, so that you can drop them onto the mouths of uh, your LPS corals. So, I figured uh, I'll drop a couple of these onto uh, the big dashies I've got in my main tank, and um, we'll just see how they take them in. So, unfortunately, this is pretty well first thing in the morning for this tank, and uh, my fish are all hovering around, but we'll we'll just see how we go. So far so good, although it looks like uh, the clowns made the uh, first move and now um, the other fish are going to come in, but that's okay, that's all part and parcel with a uh, mixed reef, um, and it's also part of uh, the challenge with LPS foods is your fish and even your shrimp are pretty um, wise onto this sort of thing, so if they see the food coming in and they're going to clean it up, but um, that's alright, we'll give it a shot and see how, um, see how it all pans out, and I'll even grab a little bit of a um, time lapse and we'll see how um, the corals respond. All right, so this time lapse has been running for a um, few minutes now, and you can see um, particularly the uh, red dish at the front and the pink to the right are uh, responding and consuming the food quite quickly. It's a little bit hard to see the mouth of the green one at the back, but um, you probably can tell by the way that it's uh, puffed up quite a lot that um, it's grabbed some food. And um, yeah, all happy days. These dishes have got a good feed, so um, can't ask for much more than that. And I guess uh, we move on to the next food. And here we are with the next food. Staying on the same tank, I'm gonna use the Vitalis soft coral food. Now this one is uh, one scoop for every um, 50 liters of tank water. I'm not gonna do the full thousand liter dose here because I don't have a lot of soft coral in the tank. But I have mixed up a uh, 250 liter dose and um, just gonna squirt it in around this end of the tank where I've got, I know they're LPS with the um, uh, candy cane corals and the um, Duncans, but um, I've also got a um, guy I just out of shot here and I wanna see if that will um, broadcast it around the tank for me. Because I'm kind of hoping that um, all of the green star polyps and the leathers there and even some of the SPS will benefit from this. So I'm just going to dump it all in here and hope that it um, spreads it around. You see my fish are still hanging around. They're totally confused as to why um, all this food's coming into their tank um, in the morning. They normally don't see food for another uh, probably uh, maybe another 10 hours from here. So um, they're excited. And you can see um, the glass cardinals are having a good um, grab at that. But um Let's just jump onto a time lapse and see if I get any sort of um, huge response at all from these corals. Okay, so I was probably a little bit late in getting the um, time lapse started, but you can see the um, Duncan coral has grabbed a um, absolute gut load of uh, food there, and you can see by the extensions and the way that the uh, heads are closed up that it's happy. Didn't see a huge feeding response from the candy canes, but I guess that's to be expected as they normally get their uh, sweepers out at night. So I might try another batch of this um, in a couple of nights' time and see if it have any um, different reaction then. All right, ripping through our uh, food selection, I'm onto the Vitalis anemone pellets. Um, I always struggle saying that word, anemone, but uh, we're onto my soft coral tank, ironically, where I didn't dose the um, soft coral food, but that's because in this tank, I have a whole heap of these beautiful uh, frosted rose bubble tips. And um, I must be honest, I, I don't really normally feed these um, these corals in this tank, but or, the, or these nems in this tank, but... Uh, when you've got a, um, a specific food like this, I'd love to uh, give them a little treat. So uh, let's drop some pellets in there. You can see the, um, the nebs uh, quite happily take them. Uh, once you drop one into their um, mouth, they tend to take it and close up quite quickly. Um, one thing I will point out here, what you want to do is get the pellets out. If you're feeding more than one nem, you're going to put more pellet, more than one pellet in the tank. Get the pellets out first. You don't want to be putting your wet hands back into the tub because that'll just make all the remaining pellets soggy. So what you can't see on screen here is, um, despite me dripping water everywhere, is that I've got uh, five or six pellets out of the container and closed it up. 
and I'm just uh, leaving one hand in the tank and uh, passing uh, the pellets to them. So I'm going to drop each of these pellets in the t into the uh, mouth of these NEMs. Some of the big ones I might even give two. And we'll just see, um, I'll, I'll, once again, I'll do a bit of a time lapse and um, I'll just poke that uh, pallet in there a bit more. Um, I'll do a time lapse and we'll just see uh, what the NEMs look like, how they're feeding. You can see the little one to the um, bottom right um, is already uh, puffing up a little bit. He's um, the smaller NEM in the tank and uh, looks like he's pretty hungry to uh, grow. So hopefully the um, time lapse picks that up well. Okay, here's that time lapse. I've tried to zoom in a little bit, and you can see, um, particularly that little uh, nem on the on the front right there, he's uh, hiding back down into the um, rocks and puffing up and doing all sorts of um, strange things. Pretty cool to see on the time lapse. In fact, you could almost see there the uh, pallet going into his mouth, which is um, something to see. So now that he's got that in there, he's stretching back out again. Happy days, and. Um, <laughs> can't ask for much more than that, I guess. The um, other pellets, uh, sorry, the other pellets, the other NEMs have uh, reacted much quicker. But um, yeah, seeing that feeding response on the little guy in the front right, well worth it. Okay, we're on to the home stretch. We've got the uh, marine grazer right up against the uh, algae flakes. And I thought I'd come back to my main tank because I actually felt really bad for my fish after feeding um, two types of coral food in here and uh, giving them nothing. So... I thought, let's go head to head. Let's put the um, marine grazer right there, sort of front and center, which you can see the fish have gone straight onto it, particularly my big guys. Um, even a trigger fish, which uh, is not known to be a uh, algae eater. And um, I'd also hold um, some uh, marine flakes in there and see if um, anyone went for those. So um, this, the uh, grazer has been a big hit so far. Every single fish in the tank, even my uh, normally pretty shy um, angels come out and having a look at it. Again, this is about eight hours before they normally get fed, but let's hold some flake in there and see if anyone's interested. See, my um, coal tank has gone straight for it, and uh, the butterfly, my pyramid butterfly, thought about it, but I uh, got a bit scared of my um, hand in the tank. Probably should have um, put these on a um, clip as well to make it a bit more fair, but uh, I like to hand-feed my fish too, so... Oh, even a clownfish came and grabbed a bit of that flake. The um, pyramid butterfly is uh, not shy now. He's coming and grabbing that out of my hands. Uh, looks like my uh, female clown's helping herself to it as well. And uh, I wonder how long it'll take before one of the big guys gets hold of it. Although they seem pretty happy with that grazer um, just munching away on it. I'm happy to say that that um, grazer has not fallen into the tank yet, which is um, always a worry with things like that, these clip-on foods. It's really good to see that my um, pyramid butterfly is normally a little bit more timid. Is oh, yeah, Even my um, flame hawk come and grab some then. And now we're in trouble. The um, fox face is uh, cottoned onto the algae flakes. He's a bit of a gut, so um, yeah, I'm surprised it took him as long as it did. Yeah, he's straight onto the flakes now. He obviously thought they tasted all right. Good luck any other fish in the tank. But uh, I guess both um, from that have been a hit. Let's um, switch to a bit of a time lapse to see just how long this uh, marine grazer will stay on the um, clip in the tank because I hate it when they um, fall off and uh, just sit down the bottom of the tank doing nothing. So um, you can see the uh, time lapse is running for a while here and uh, pretty much every fish in the tank's had a crack at this um, grazer. I must admit, um, I was hoping to leave this time lapse running until the um, until the food fell off, but uh, this video went for uh, this time lapse went for near on two hours, and um, the uh, food's still holding strong. So I guess um, after that, I figured that uh, it's more than up to the task, and it's not going to just uh, get moist and uh, soggy and then fall off the clip and go to the bottom of your tank and rot away. So what? Uh, whether you're uh, playing pinball or uh, feeding your corals and fish, Vitalis have got you covered. Although, probably realistically, if you're playing pinball, not so much. But if you've got a reef tank, Vitalis, good stuff. <laughs>